Chapters 28, 29, and 30 are gonna all roll together and tell a nice little story. Rogo has, a, Rogo has his plant figured out. He has his constraints identified. He's had this opportunity with Peach to say, I'm gonna hit this 15% improvement. And now he has to be thoughtful about how does he really hit that? And the way he's gonna go do that is by cutting his batch size. And I always think of this in terms of what's, what's easier to move, uh, you know, a bunch of rocks or, or a fluid. And if we keep theoretically, if we start with two boulders and we keep cutting their size down and cutting their size down, eventually we get to sand and eventually you get to something that's very easy to move and transport that moves more like a fluid and is easier to, um, and, and because of those fluid dynamics and because of the way things move, it's easier to imagine a smooth flow, right? Uh, fluids have better flow than two giant boulders. So the quote that Rogo has here is, okay, if we cut batch sizes in half, then that means it ought to take half the time it does now. And he, he is gonna keep doing this over the next couple chapters. So um, he puts the challenge out to his team and again, they've got this drum and buffer system going where they're able to manage and see how to keep inventory flowing through the constraints. And with this, all of their activity is going to throughput. So everything that they put into the company, they know that they've got a backlog of orders and they know they're gonna be able to sell everything that comes through. So by cutting batch sizes, they're actually increasing the throughput of their plant making um, making flow improve, making the, the product output perform more like a fluid. And they're just gonna keep cutting by uh, cutting that backlog. And that gets to page 235 where he says, with our overdues gone and our current backlog declining, I've gotta get more work into my plant. So cutting the batch size works so well that by the end of the chapter, Rogo's actually started to see that He's not, he doesn't have enough demand to utilize all the capacity that he's unlocked in his plant. And he found that capacity by the things that we've been covering in the previous chapters. He's identified the constraints, he's worked the constraints, and now that he's figured out where his constraints are and how to keep flow going to them in a consistent manner, he's cut his batch size to further increase flow and output. The goal is a great book, go read it directly go buy it book on tape every day that you get to apply the principles of the theory of constraints to your personal life you make the world and your own life a little bit better